Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Lo. Welcome to my apartment in Los Angeles. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hi, I'm Lo Sadler. I'm an editor and a content creator, and we're in my home in Los Angeles, California. I've lived in this apartment for four, almost five years now. I found it on Craigslist, actually. I got very lucky I was leaving an apartment that was horrible. I didn't even end up finishing my lease there. Um, I found this on Craigslist. I ended up uh, qualifying for the apartment. Uh, maybe a week later and I immediately started packing my stuff, moved in and I had unpacked like a week later, I think. When I first came and saw this apartment, I fell in love with the windows. They were really the focal point of the room and even though the room was a weird yellow brown color, I knew that I could add some paint or a lot of paint actually. I even painted the windows, um, but the original character and the details in here were just my favorite thing. They really drew me to the whole apartment. So this is a one bedroom, one bath. I'm not 100% sure about the square footage, but it's pretty spacious, I think, for um, a typical one bedroom in LA. I've got a really long hallway, um, a vintage bathroom that has all of the old tile, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty large for one person and a cat. Welcome to my living room. It's small, but mighty, I like to think. Um, and there are a lot of objects in here, a lot of found objects, I think is what the people call them. Um, a few things have like some cool stories, but I've got kind of an eclectic gallery wall. Um, actually, I think my favorite piece on the gallery wall is uh, this sort of mirror mosaic thing. I actually got that in Morocco and I didn't have any space in my suitcase so I just had to like carry that around with me on multiple flights. Uh, but I think it was worth it. I think it looks very cool and nice. One of the focal points in my apartment I think is the gallery wall. I've had it up for a while but I'm constantly like rearranging the art, bringing in new pieces, bringing in pieces that I've had for a long time. Another thing I like to do with gallery walls is like make them a little dynamic if I can. Like I don't, I don't really love to have um, things that are all the same shape or all the same orientation. I just, I love putting as much stuff as I can in there. I got these legs actually from my uh, boyfriend's dad. He saw them and I think he knew that I would love them because I love creepy figurines and busts and old crumbly things, but if I got these from a vintage store, I know they would have cost like hundreds of dollars probably, but they were free 99, so I just threw some beads in there and I kind of think it's cute. I also love small lights and candles, like that's my thing. I very rarely turn on um, like big lights in my apartment, but I have this lamp, it's from I think DCW Editions is how you say their name, but it's like a touch to start, and I feel like that's really cool. Um, I also have candles burning. Right now I've got bergamot and shisho candle burning. It's from PF Candle Co. I love them. I have their candles like all throughout my apartment. I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to candles. That's my uh, character flaw, I guess. But I've got a little bit of um, more creepy figurines sort of speckled in on my console here. 
these I grabbed just at Goodwill, I think, or maybe Salvation Army, um, and I used them as bookends. This apartment, when I moved in, it only had one um, electrical light source, and I switched out their fixture and added a new one, but because it would get dark in here at nighttime, I was like, how can I get some more renter-friendly-ish lighting? So I ended up hanging these two sconces. They're from CB2, actually, and they're real marble, so they're very heavy, actually, right before you guys got here. One fell off the wall. It literally fell off the wall and I almost had a breakdown, but we were able to get it back up uh, before you came in. Um, we used a bunch of anchors. I also have a chandelier that I sort of just mounted to the ceiling. There is no electrical uh, connecting that to anything. I usually just have a puff light in there so I can sort of turn it on when I need to, but really I just hung it because I, I think it looks cute. <laughs> I thought it could sort of be a part of the gallery wall as well. Um, and it, it looks a bit funky, but I love when I have things um, coming down from the ceiling because it's such a big unused space. This corner is an interesting corner. I've had people um, question me about it a few times, but I don't watch a ton of TV, but when I do, I like to be able to like just watch TV easily. I know a lot of people like hide their TVs and um, they have the frame TV, which I think is very cool, but until I can afford a frame TV, I just got a regular one and popped it on an easel. This is a, not even a TV easel. It's like the cheapest easel I could find. Um, and it holds my TV pretty perfectly, I think. And it sort of makes the TV look um, a little bit less of an eyesore. I like to think it's still a big black box in the living room, but I don't mind it. I don't think you really need to hide your TV. I know that's kind of like a, a faux pas with like real designers. Um, but me, I'm like, you know, I live here, so I want to have the TV accessible. Also in this corner, I actually have a little closet. It's full of stuff. That's like my storage closet. I have um, all the doors that I removed from the rooms in my apartment, just kind of jammed in there. But I didn't want to like completely close that space off because there's the cutest little window in there and it lets in like good natural light, which I love natural light. But I just threw a beaded curtain up and sort of catty cornered the TV so like hopefully no one will notice all this stuff. I believe that hat is from maybe Senegal or Congo, but it's basically a hat. It's I thought that could be another fun way to sort of zhuzh up the TV, like add another little pop of color. Um, I like that it looks very handmade. It is handmade, um, and I love sort of bringing in things that are a little more organic in addition to all the sort of like hard lines and uh, structure, things like that. My living room is also kind of like the crash pad hangout spot for everyone. This couch has seen better days. There have been a lot of spills, a lot of vicious cat attacks. If you kind of look closely, which maybe don't look closely, but you can see where my cat sort of like took a lot of his frustration and anger out. Um, but I do love the shape of this couch. I saved up for a long time to get it because I thought that it was a little bit cooler than the traditional um, square sectionals. So I really wanted to make sure it was comfortable as well. Um, this one's pretty deep. The cushions are pretty cushiony. So when people come over, like they go to sleep on here, which maybe means my parties aren't that fun, but it's nice. We also have this half pink wall. It was not my intention to have a half pink wall and a half greenish gray wall, but I painted the wall pink probably two and a half years ago now, and I really loved it. I added this uh, chair rail wall trim in the middle, um, and it looked really cool, but it always felt a little unfinished to me. So I thought, what else can I do? What else can I do? And I decided to put the chair rail around the entire apartment and paint that. I had always intended to paint the pink white again. I thought it just made more sense and it would look a lot more open and airy. But I kind of fell in love with how the pink looks, 
at least for now, we also have these shelves that I put up. I put these up literally probably two, three weeks ago. I had always wanted to do something in this corner. It, it had been empty. Um, I just had like, I think one or two pieces of art hanging with the uh, that wall sconce there. But I had a bunch of decor that I wasn't using. Most of this decor is thrifted, even though that vase there, that urn, that's actually from Amazon, which I still can't believe I got that on Amazon. But I love how this corner feels a lot cozier now, a lot more lived in. It also has my like, that's my uh, statue guy, I nicknamed him Loki. So I don't drive, which is like, I think that's kind of a unheard of thing in LA, but I've never driven, I'm from the East Coast originally. So when I wanna get something or pick up like a piece of furniture on Facebook Marketplace, I have to get creative when it comes to getting <laughs> the items. So that statue was actually in Inglewood or maybe like really, really south, south LA. I knew I wanted it. I knew that I did not wanna pay for someone to pick it up for me. I didn't wanna like bug my friends to give me a ride. So I took my little push cart, um, you know, that like the grandmas have when they go and do their laundry. I took my push cart on the bus. I took like two buses and walked a, a mile to get that statue. And it is very heavy. And this little old lady was uh, selling it. So she couldn't help me like lift it pick it up, nothing, but I put it in my cart. I took it back on my two buses home, carried it up like two flights of stairs, and I'm never getting rid of that now, I'm, unless someone breaks it, which hopefully that never happens. I'm stuck with him for life. Uh, that's just one of my mini statues in here, actually. Um, I've got little figurines and busts everywhere. This one, is actually not thrifted. I think it looks kind of vintage, but it's from a black owned business that's based here in LA, Effortless Composition. I love the owner, Brittany. She's so sweet and she like curates and finds the coolest stuff. This is from her. I have some other stuff from her and Effortless Composition as well. One thing that I really love about my living room is like um, having little things that my family have given me in here, especially since my family is so far away. It's nice to sort of um, look around and see reminders of them. I have actually down there on the floor a picture of my, this is where I keep some of my um, spare linen and tablecloths and things like that, but that is a picture of my grandmother on my mom's side. I never got the chance to meet her, but I love the photo. I think it looks so cool and it's nice knowing that you know, she's kind of watching over me occasionally. I usually keep it on the floor, partially because it's hard to hang things sometimes. I just, I just get a little bit lazy, but I thought it added a little, a little something to this um, sort of console area. These are just from Target. I think a lot of people have the exact same uh, like little console table, media center thing. So I just thought putting some art on the floor would make it look a little a little new, a little fresh. I really do love lamps. Um, I don't know if it's because they are functional um, or if it's because they're pretty or maybe it's like a little mix of both, but wherever there's a spare corner or an empty surface, I'm like, can we fit a lamp in there? This is a lantern actually behind my couch. That is an outdoor lantern. It's from Mackenzie Childs. I had my eye on that for a long time and I was like, I need that. I don't have any outdoor space, but I knew I wanted it. So I just keep a candle in there um, and occasionally I'll like have it lit and I'll switch out the scents, but I really like that. It doesn't add much light, but I feel like it's, it's like a fun little thing to look at. I got this lamp from an Instagram reseller actually. Um, I had been stalking this, <laughs> I had been stalking this girl for a little while on Instagram, she like also finds and curates the best stuff. All of her things are vintage, um, really unique and quirky. She drove all the way from San Diego to drop this off. I love this. This lamp has been all over my apartment um, and my bedroom, used to be on the console table over there. I literally move this lamp and everything around all the time just because, you know, you get bored with stuff and it's 
fun to see how things will look if you, you know, put them in a new space, give them a little bit of new life. I'm not really sure about these curtains yet. If you look closely, you can tell that they're a um, pink gingham. I think if you pull back, they look purely pink, but they're not purely pink. They do have a pattern and they have these cute little bows at the top. It's very girly, which isn't normally like me, but I've just been embracing pink lately. I'm in my pink era. Um, and I love that they just, they're very feminine, I think. I don't know if I'll keep them. I may go back to just a nice white, off-white linen, but for now, I kind of think they're fun. I think they're really cute for summer. Funny story about these curtains, I actually got them from the kids section. Um, Sometimes I feel like the adult decor is like a little boring, uh, it lacks color. So whenever I want something like fun and different, I literally shop the kids section at like every decor store, Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel. If there's a kids section, I'm in there. <laughs> That's where these are from. And then I have this bench. It's sort of a leftover from my boho days. I used to really like um, boho decor, rattan, everything. I don't so much love that now, but I couldn't get rid of this bench. Um, I got it for a really good price actually, and now when people come over, it gives me like a little bit of extra seating. And when I'm here alone, I can pop some of my uh, favorite books on top. And I'm actually maybe one of the only people I know who reads my coffee table books, or at least I look through them all. So I have a few that I really love. This is a photography book. Um, it's called Black is Beautiful, and a lot of the images in here are just really pretty. I think it's nice for people to flip through them when they come over if they want. And yeah, I've got actually Kelly Wurstler's uh, interior design book. I love her. Everything she does is like so good. So my boyfriend actually got me that as a birthday gift one year. Um, and then he took me to Kelly Wurstler's um, hotel that she designed in Santa Monica. So it was a really good birthday that year. <laughs> I started sharing my apartment on the internet pretty much uh, when I moved in here. I had really loved decor and thrifting and vintage everything uh, even before I moved in, probably since college I would like go thrifting and find weird bird cages and bring them back to my dorm. Um, but I really feel like I got the chance to explore a bit more with this apartment. Um, it was the first apartment that I like really fell in love with the bones. Um, this apartment has crown molding that's original, um, original wood floors. I, I feel like I really got lucky here so it was it was easy to start um, really decorating how I wanted and I, I think that I had just been following so many people that I look up to uh, so many designers on social media for years now and I was like, you know what, like maybe I can do it. So my personal style, that is a, uh, that's a tricky question. I think I'm still sort of in flux deciding what the word is for my apartment. Um, I definitely love things with a little bit of Parisian flair. I like old things. So I'd say maybe I've got a little bit of eclectic Parisian, um, just maximalist core going on in here. And anything with like patterns, I really love that. I really love adding texture. I love layers. Um, because I just love stuff so much, I'm always trying to figure out how can I get more of it in my apartment without making my apartment look like a hoarder's uh, den kind of thing. But I, I recently just got patterned curtains. They're um, gingham and pink, which is a little bit much, but I thought it would work possibly. Um, I love a good floral print. Um, I love stripes. I love plaid. I think the tricky thing is uh, trying to figure out how to get everything to work together. So I usually stick to a more muted color palette everywhere else, like the walls, but I don't know what came over me. I. I decided to leave the top of one of my walls pink and paint the bottom like a soft greenish gray. I don't know how long it'll stay like that, but right now I like it. Now we're in another corner of my living room. There is 
more color as well. We've got, it, it's hard to pick up on camera, but the door is actually light blue. Um, the color is called light blue actually from Farrell and Ball, I think. I decided I wanted to paint the door on a whim. So I first painted it white probably four years ago. Recently, I just was like, I need more brightness in here, more color. And I didn't realize that the black was sort of making the whole this whole uh, corner of the living room feel a little bit darker. So I painted this light blue. Um, this color, which you may not be able to tell, it's slightly different. This color is Cromarty from Farrell and Ball. And it's a little bit green, a little bit gray. I think it depends on how the light hits it. I like how much more open everything feels in here. We have this sort of faux entryway situation over here. This was another thing that I sort of uh, put up the first week I moved in actually. I was like, I need to have some shelves and I didn't know how to do floating shelves properly, so I just got brackets from Home Depot, spray painted them, spray painted uh, the cheapest like wood board I could get from Home Depot as well. And I use this sort of as like the drop zone in my apartment. So I've got my keys here, my rings, um, a little hand sanitizer. But I also have a few pictures of my family here they're they're really small i don't have like too many photographs of real people in my place but i do have these ones of my family i've got um my dad when he was really young this is my grandfather and my dad and my uncle they're very old so it's like black and white vibes just to give you a sense of the age um and then we've got a picture of me and one of my sisters and my mom so i thought that was cute and like when I'm like running out the door grabbing my keys, it's sort of nice to like look at them and then, you know, dip. <laughs> There's just like a few random things. I've got another little bust here. This one is also from Effortless Composition. I really like this one. Um, it gives me a little pop of color. Um, I've got disco balls because you've got to have disco balls if you live in LA. This corner is actually a work in progress it's still sort of coming together i don't think the lamp is going to stay here but this lamp was um kind of the most epic i found this on the street it was like in the trash pickup area where people just like dump their the stuff they don't want so i found this on my birthday actually um i was leaving a ramen place which is like right up the street from me in koreatown uh, we had had a few drinks and my best friend offered to carry this for me in her heels uh, So she literally like walked it up the hill It was free and I've looked this up online These kind of lamps go for just a lot more than free typically the whole corner actually I think is either thrifted or Facebook marketplace finds this little cabinet. I got it from Facebook marketplace um, the gentleman drove it all the way from Torrance for me. I've gotten really good, I think, at talking to Facebook Marketplace sellers. I think, and this is like my secret, I guess I'm gonna share it with everyone, is you have to like compliment them right off the bat, but you can't be too interested because then they'll know that they have like a really good find. So you have to be really nice, um, go out of your way to like give them a little kind word and then you'll have people who offer to drop off items for you that are really heavy. Uh, I just mostly use that for bar stuff. We're a little light on supplies right now, but eventually it'll get filled up again. It is the weekend. I've got another statue here. This one has lights. So this is really fun at nighttime. I sometimes turn this on to get a little extra twinkle, this statue. Um, and this mirror, it's a pretty epic mirror, I think. If you look closely, you'll see a lot of um, imperfections and stuff. These are things I can't help at the moment. I think I'm going to need to get someone who can clean behind the glass to uh, get rid of some of these spots. But I got this from the Habitat Restore, the Habitat for Humanity Restore. I love shopping there. They have so many good vintage things and all of their proceeds go back into Habitat for Humanity. So it's like, you know, you get cool stuff and you help other people get 
cool stuff, a house maybe. Um, it did need a lot of love and fixing up. It was completely uh, shattered from, or like separated from the frame when we brought it upstairs. So I had to nail a lot of things together. I had to like glue the frame. You can see like all of the staples I put in there because uh, the it, it literally was falling apart. But now it's here. I don't think I'll be getting rid of this anytime soon either. This corner is pretty different from um, the rest of the living room. It's a lot darker and heavier. I actually did not want that vibe. I didn't really want a dark and heavy vibe. I wanted it to be a little lighter and airier, but I really hate uh, painting original wood. I, it's, it like kind of pains me when I see people doing their like thrift flips, which always look cool in the end, but I'm just like, no, I hate to see you get rid of the old wood, the cherry wood that has like so much character. I initially planned to paint this mirror. I thought I might paint it gold or just sort of strip off the um, dark original color. I can't bring myself to do it, at least not yet. Um, I don't think I'm a good enough DIY either to really do it justice. So for now, we just have a very dark corner. It gets a little lighter when I turn on like, um, like a, my candle warmer um, and these like little twinkle lights up here. This is kind of the best spot for selfies actually. So when people come over, you can turn this on, turn these little twinkle lights on and you can get like a really good mirror selfie vibe going. So you've gotta have your mirror selfies and it's nice when they're right next to the drinks. This was, I actually bought it in 2023 at the end of last year, but it didn't end up shipping until the beginning of this year. I got it from Lulu in Georgia actually, and it, 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 did, it did cost me a little bit, but I was like, I know it's gonna look so good in this corner. I actually had to downsize from my old dining table, which was a lot bigger, but this one I think just looks better, packs a bigger punch. But, so I'll sometimes have like my friends sit here, but because the table's so small, we still overflow to the couch, overflow to like my comfy chair. Sometimes people just sit on the floor, which that does make me feel bad as a host, but what can you do? You know, let them ground, I guess. I think what I love most about my home, it's, it's kind of like a two-part thing. Um, you can't tell right now, but usually my apartment gets like the best light. The windows that sort of sold me on this building, this apartment, um, they're huge, they take up almost an entire wall of my apartment, so when the sun is out and we've got like some good weather here, it doesn't feel like we're in one of the busiest neighborhoods in LA, it feels like we're somewhere cozy, like tucked away. Um, so I love that, I love the natural lighting we get. Um, I also just, you know, this is like maybe a little less concrete, but I just love how it feels in here. Um, Usually like my friends will come over and we'll just like have a drink or two, have snacks, vibe. And I love that people kind of get comfortable. There's, it's not like we're not very precious about things in here. Um, I, I think it's just like a, a good vibe spot. Let me take you into my kitchen now. This space, I actually have a love-hate relationship with the kitchen. It's pretty big considering the size of my apartment, but I am not the biggest cook. I can cook, I just choose not to. My boyfriend does most of the cooking in here actually when he's around, um, but I do love the idea of a big kitchen. I love like decorating a kitchen. This room still needs a bit of work, still needs a bit of love, but there are some fun things in here. This is a uh, sort of a touchy subject on the internet. I used to have a um, sort of a full line of cabinets right here, but I took a saw to them actually and sawed the cabinets off uh, so that I could bring in this cabinet. It has um, 
a little bit more storage and I like to think it's cuter. This just holds um, like my teas and spices and stuff. That's the one thing I do enjoy even though I don't really cook very much. When I do cook, I love to have seasonings um, and I like to have them like easy to grab. My sawed off cabinets, I feel like now you can barely even tell that I cut them in half. We sort of repainted everything, replastered, filled in all the holes, um, evened out the sort of line right there. But again, you don't, you don't have to like get too close into there. Um, we also have my sink area. It's definitely an old apartment and you can tell it's an old apartment by the kitchen, I think. Um, my landlord just kind of gave me the landlord special. I really like my landlord, but they definitely painted everything white in here. So they painted over the original tile. They painted over like the cabinet door hinges, literally everything. So I've been doing some things piece by piece. Like I painted um, the cabinets dark green. This is a green from Clara paint actually. Um, I changed my faucet and I got this uh, pretty gold one. I really wanted the faucet that has like um, a double bar, but I was on a renter budget and I didn't want to spend a ton of money. So I got this, which I still think is really nice and I can sort of spray it around, move it around, which is cool. Um, I also added these peel and stick tiles. They're very renter friendly actually like um, when I was applying them, I messed up a ton, but when I would like pull them off to restick them, they didn't mess up any of the old painted tiles. I actually did a checkerboard pattern, which was very um, monotonous, uh, and the pattern I actually did mess it up a little bit if you look closely, which again, just don't look at anything too closely in here, but I think it, the if you zoom out and you pull back, I think it looks pretty cool. You know what, it, it is funny. They gave me two sources of lights uh, in this kitchen and really none in the living room, but I got these light fixtures from Terrain, which is I think like Anthropology's sister brand. Um, and I hung these myself. I added these ceiling medallions. The ceiling medallions are new and they are a little smaller than I had imagined. I think they are definitely a lesson in reading everything when you shop online. I thought they were gonna be a lot bigger, but I just didn't read correctly, so they're quite tiny, but still cute, I like to think. And I think they add a little more of a sort of elevated, um, maybe Parisian style to an otherwise kind of boho light, which I like. This rug isn't vintage. It's a, it's one of the washable rugs that you can just grab from Ruggable. And I like that it's washable because otherwise I don't think I would have a rug in the kitchen. I imagine that if I cooked more, it could get very dirty very quickly. This one is washable. I have washed it. Normally I kind of use it to cover up um, the paint that I spilled on the floor when I was painting. My cat stepped in the paint and his little footprint is down there, which is cute, but I'm, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that out when it's time for me to move. So my fridge, it's the closest I could get to a Smeg fridge, basically, uh, without paying the Smeg fridge price. Um, I just got this one and I sort of begged my landlord to let me bring this in and get rid of the old, really tiny white refrigerator that was here originally. This doesn't fit a ton of food, but because I don't cook that much and because it's only me who lives here full time, it works for now anyway. If I move, I may end up leaving this fridge here sort of upsizing, but for now I think it's good. I just have a few little pictures, some more family. These are um, my little cousins, Zora and Zay. I think they're so cute. So. I just, I just put them up there and they make me smile whenever I see them. And then we have my boring stove. It's not a cute stove, but to make it look a little more exciting, I just hung these little shelves here. They could definitely use a little more styling, but 
it's kind of practical. Those are sort of the glasses I grab the most when I have wine with friends. Um, and then I added that little LED light right above so that when my boyfriend cooks, he has a light so he can actually see what he's doing. One built-in that I think is very cute. I haven't done anything really special with this. I think it will look cool with wallpaper maybe, but for now I just um, use it to hold some of my uh, some of my cuter glasses. I've got a lot of vintage cups in there, a lot of um, not vintage cups in there as well. And then I have just a sort of mini gallery wall. This is kind of where all the art goes that I love, but I don't really know where to put it. So I've got this, which is actually, I when I worked at Urban Outfitters, I worked there for like two years. Um, we would get to bring home so much stuff and we got like such a good price on everything. This really wasn't anything for sale, but I thought it was fun and it's the only word art that I like, um, just because it says, try me. Uh, and then I've got some more thrifted things, a little smoking cat up there, which is really fun. It reminds me of my cat. I always think of him as kind of like a surly man who may or may not smoke. Um, got another lady smoking, which is sensing a theme here. I don't smoke actually. This is a Facebook marketplace find that I, I got a little while back, um, probably like two, two years ago. Um, when I do cook, this is sort of where I prep everything. So I'll like chop veggies and stuff here. I make my tea here usually. It's nice because I can sort of like stare out the window at all of my neighbors and see what they're getting into and sometimes um, my cat will jump up there I know it's a little gross when cats get on the counters but in this house that's that's what we do I guess but I do clean uh, before I you know use this uh, area for food they're not the most special things but I do whenever I can I do like to switch the switch plate covers and outlet covers in my apartment, I think it makes things look a little more intentional, especially if you have like those old covers that your landlord just painted over a bunch of times. So I just switched mine out for these gold ones that look a little more interesting. I actually am a pretty big DIY girly, a little bit less now. I found that um, the more time I have, the more able I am to DIY things, but um, you know, I sort of got my start doing carpentry, doing um, various projects. Like, I built a really cool chair a couple years ago that um, that was really fun. Now I don't do anything nearly as complex. I'm just like adding legs to an Ikea dresser, that kind of thing. I think first and foremost, uh, when you're decorating an apartment or a house, if you're lucky enough to have a house, um, I think it's really important to know what you like. I feel like now, especially with social media, we can see what really big, cool interior designers are doing. Um, and I feel like it's easy to feel a little bit of pressure to do what they're doing and do what everyone is doing. Um, it's like universally good, but I think if you, have a good understanding of what it is that you actually like even if that's the trendy stuff um, I think you should do it I found that you know people who kind of take themselves and their home decor their style very seriously you know sometimes it doesn't they may not like it as much as if they just sort of had a little bit of fun with their with their style with their decor if they paid attention to the things that they like that like catches their eye so my biggest thing I think would be to just go with what you like figure out what you like and just lean in heavily <laughs> to that and now I'm gonna show you guys my bedroom we're gonna walk through a little hallway to get there it's not the most interesting hallway but I've done a few things in there Before we get to my bedroom, we have my little hallway. It's not super special, but I do have a lot of mirrors in this hallway. I have a lot of mirrors in my apartment overall, actually, because you gotta do a good mirror check at all times. So I've got 
a mirror here. I use this for putting my contacts in. A mirror here that I use when I want a little more of a full body shot. Um, there's a mirror here. <laughs> like there, there are a lot of mirrors. Okay, and this is my bedroom. This is my bedroom. I like to think of it as sort of the pink cave of my apartment. I really, really leaned in with the pink here. We've got three pink walls and then a pink wall mural on the back wall. It's a lot, but, and it did take me a little bit of time to get used to the color and to decide that I actually love the color. But now that it's been up for a while, I've had it painted, I think, maybe like six months or so. I really do love it now. I have a, another gallery wall in here. I, I love gallery walls and I love art, I guess. This is also sort of a new addition. I have some things that are vintage. A lot of these prints are actually new, but they look vintage, which I think is really cool. This is one of my favorite prints. It's just like a reproduction of a Josephine Baker painting. But I think it looks really cool. I don't really love traditional plants. I like clippings. I like flowers a lot, but you won't find too many actual potted plants in my apartment. I think just the mix of um, having to take care of them as well as having to deal with bugs, it's just not really my favorite thing. But I do love greenery, um, the look of it. So this actually is faux. You can probably tell it's faux, but I still think it looks nice. I've got some dried florals here. Um, I think they just really sort of break up all of the pink actually um, and then I do have some live clippings those don't require any dirt so I'm okay with those I consider them to be more like flowers than plants actually my bed is it's definitely haphazardly made I was making it up when you guys got here um, but the one thing I do like is to add pattern to my bed whenever I can I know it's it's a it's a little bit much for some people having stripes and florals and pink walls but i kind of think it really adds to the cozy factor whenever i can i go for linen bedding so i love that linen bedding is getting more fun now so this is striped and it's colored but it still feels really good um this is from piglet and bed actually i love their linen and then i have just this little fan I got that fan back when I was still working at Urban Outfitters actually, so I've had this fan for maybe five or six years, something crazy like that. It's been in almost all of my LA apartments. I don't know that it technically works in here, but I like it a lot, so it's gonna stay there at least for the time being. I added some sconces on either side of my bed. I wanted to do something to get more lighting in here and I thought that would be like a fun way to do it. So I just have these little hand hooks holding up the lights. This light has been the bane of my existence for so long um, because this apartment is so old. I think it's from like the 1920s or the 1930s. The electrical is really, it's very shady to be honest. So I've had this light and the electricity go out at least three or four times. And every time the power goes out, the entire light fixture goes out as well. So I've had a boob light in here. I've had a really nice vintage chandelier. I've had no light actually for like a year and a half. Nothing at all was up there. This is my newest thing. I'm really hoping this one doesn't go out because I love it. It's from Mitzi actually. And we added this, the ceiling medallion just to um, make it look a little more finished. This side of my room is, it's sort of a hodgepodge of things that I like. So I've got like three different dressers in here. They're all very dark wood, but they kind of remind me of like Beauty and the Beast um, a little bit, this dresser especially. So this one was another Facebook Marketplace find. I could not pack this up on the bus so we had to rent a u-haul to get this one but i do think it was worth it it gives me like a ton more storage and i just keep like a lot of my extra bedding in here um my cat is a hairless cat so i keep all of his sweaters in here so that when it gets cold he has um a place where i can easily grab 
his clothes from. The curtains were another mini sort of DIY project. The walls in here are kind of funky. They're sloped, like they go into this cave-like shape. So I was trying to think of how I could get curtains up without um, having them be super short and low to the ground. So I thought, well, maybe I can hang them from the ceiling. I sort of made this somewhat janky little DIY rod with just chain um, and some C hooks. I just screwed those into uh, dowels from Home Depot and painted them black. And I, I kind of feel like it gives my room like more of a cottage kind of feel a little bit. So I like that. Um, and then I have just my chair in here. Usually this chair is filled with clothes. Uh, just it, It's not usually very cute or clean, but I just, I, I got rid of all my dirty clothes so that I could show you what the actual chair in the corner looks like. So this is wallpaper um, and it's the traditional wallpaper, but I really didn't want to put traditional wallpaper on the walls in here. I guess that's where I draw the line with uh, renter friendly upgrades. So I put this up sort of doing a little fun hack. I use basically double-sided tape to get this up here. So it's really removable. It comes down easily without messing up the paint. Um, and I think it, you can't see a lot of the print because of this huge dresser here, but I still feel like it adds a little bit of something to the room. This huge bus right there, that was a, another gift from my boyfriend's dad. I don't know who he, I'm not sure like who his clients are, but he's a contractor. So whenever they have cool stuff that they don't want and he doesn't want, he gives it to me. But I love that guy. He just sits on the floor right now because he's too heavy to go on any type of furniture He break without breaking it. I do have these like wooden beads. I really have no clue what they are, but I thought they looked really cool. And I think I got them for maybe like 39 bucks, which to me was kind of a good price for them. But I used to have them on my coffee table and it looked kind of um, beachy, a little too beachy. So I thought maybe I can hang them from something and they might look cool. Well, this dresser was another project that, that I did um, and the internet had thoughts about it. A lot of people didn't love the color, which I don't love the color either now that my walls are pink, but you know, it, it does its job still. I basically just added legs and these dowels for handles. One day I think I'll stain the handles a different color. I may or may not paint this again, um, but for now, again, I do like it. I've got, of course, more Facebook Marketplace finds. This huge mirror, I do love it. Um, I've never bolted it to the wall, but it's never moved, it's never fallen down, and it's great when I like do my makeup and stuff in the morning. I've just got like a little cabinet here where I keep all of my like uh, scents and perfumes and things, so I really love that. I think what gives a home its soul, I think it definitely depends on the people that live in the home. I think that also is affected by what you bring in. I bring in a lot of stuff, a lot of vintage things, a lot of new things as well. Um, but what I've been doing a lot more lately is just being a bit more intentional with the things that I get, the things that I find. And I think I've noticed a little bit of an energy shift in my apartment because of that. Like, you know, if you buy into the whole vintage things have energy, uh, sort of side of the internet I feel like you'd be able to tell that sometimes you get things that maybe have the energy from the previous owners and um, I like to make sure the energy is good so if I'm bringing in anything even if I'm inviting people in I just I want to make sure that they're contributing to the overall feel they're not messing anything up not physically but just energy wise Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.